it's so good. I love it. It's good no, it's better. Oh my god, it's so much better. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to the what's the name of this podcast? <laughs> Your favorite book. Your favorite book podcast. I'm Tanner. I'm Mallory. We're siblings. And we like books. We like reading books a lot. We specifically like fancy books. Last episode we talked about Bonesmith. And this was, episode yeah. oh, this episode we're talking about The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. With two B's. Yes. Three B's. Yeah, if you include the Robin one. Yeah. So the reason why we did this podcast we talked about in the last episode, my favorite book of 2023 was Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Um, my favorite book was Bonesmith, which is what we did last episode. Yeah. Um, I absolutely loved Assassin's Apprentice because... Uh, and I feel like I'm 28 years late to it. Mm -hmm. After I read it, I was like, why? Why didn't I read this when I was a kid instead of Harry Potter? Yeah. I, I still liked Harry Potter. I, I loved it as a kid. Mm -hmm. But Robin Hobb was like the book that I read where I, if I had read it when I was a little boy, I just would have felt, fallen in love with it. Yeah. I loved, especially medieval fantasy. Mm -hmm. This is like pretty straightforward medieval fantasy. Yeah. Western European medieval fantasy. Um, the magic systems were interesting, but not out of this world. Mm -hmm. The plot was very straightforward, but it's a strong character-driven story. Um, it was just right up my alley. But even though I listened to it 28 years late, <clears throat> um, I still absolutely love this book. Mm -hmm. I binged it in like three days, and I think I've forgotten everything about it. <laughs> and I'm on book three right now. I'm almost done with it. Mm -hmm. So everything that we're going to talk about today, it might just kind of be a blur for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like whenever I binge a series like that, that fast, yeah. especially with no break in between book one and book two and book three, I'm kind of like... Oh, I remember that as one huge long story. Yeah. What happened in book one? Where did book two start? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that. Yeah, so I feel like you're going to have to take the reins here. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so I would, I'm would. i just going to take a step back from this and have you talk about this book. Okay. And I want you to tear it apart because I tore apart your favorite <laughs> book. <laughs> I'm very curious what you have to say about this. Yeah, I <clears throat> I really enjoyed reading this. Um it's Honestly? Not, yeah, I really did. Okay. I enjoyed okay. reading it. And I listened to the audiobook mm -hmm. and read the book. Okay. Just, you know, depending on what I was doing. Um, and sometimes when I listen to audiobooks, I don't listen that well. So yeah. sometimes, like, in the beginning, the pace was pretty slow. And yeah. so some of that I wasn't quite paying attention to, I think. Um, but this book is about... A boy named Fitz, mm -hmm. who is the bastard of a prince, the next in line to be king. Chivalry. Yes. Is his father's name. Yeah, is his father father's name. And he is raised by his mother and her father, so his grandfather, mm -hmm. right? We assume. We assume. And the book starts with his grandfather giving him over to the prince's people and saying, yeah. I've raised this bastard for six years. You're taking him for the rest. I can't stand it I anymore. I can't handle it. So that's where the book starts. Yeah. And his mom is like screaming and crying in the back. It's it's uh, very traumatic. Yeah. Oh, also content warning for this episode. We will be yeah. talking about child abuse and animal cruelty. Yeah. Um, it's a great book. It's a great book. <laughs> but yeah, be aware if you're Sensitive, sensitive to those, to those things. things. And I am sensitive to those things. I should have warned you. No, that's okay. I mean, I've read a lot of fantasy books that are like that. Yeah. So, and, and I could see it coming. So it's not like, at least the animal cruelty I could see coming. The yeah. Child abuse is what it started with. <laughs> I think I'm just like a husk of a human being. And so when I read those <laughs> things, I'm just like, yeah, this is normal. Yeah. You're like, okay, <laughs> sure. It doesn't bother me. It won't bother anyone else. Yeah. But. Yeah. Um, it's not as bad as like Guardians of the Galaxy oh, levels of animal cruelty. I hated like, that. My so, God, could we get a trigger warning, please? Yeah. Before this movie, I hated that. Anyway, that's a discussion for a whole other for a different day. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's where the book starts, and then we follow this boy as he's raised by the prince's stableman, which is like his right hand man named Bur Burich. Mm -hmm. Burich, right? Okay. He's essentially his father figure. Yeah, yeah. His adoptive father. Uh-huh. And he was Chivalry's 
best friend, right hand man, just yeah. like you said. Yeah. So it's a natural connection between those two, I guess, or I guess it's a natural thing for Burridge to raise Fitz. Yeah, because he raised all of his horses, all of chivalry's horses and yeah. dogs and hounds and hawks. So it's kind of like this, like, oh, he's just another object of chivalry's that... I, I would say it's more like chivalry and Burridge were almost brothers. Ah, yeah. But um, you might not have gleaned that from the first book. Yeah, not in the... I think we start to see that at the very, very end, which was very yeah. touching. Okay. Um, but initially, it kind of was like this... I mean, he's, he literally sleeps his first night in the horse stable, With right? the horses With and the, the puppies. With the horses and, and the puppies. Like, yeah. he's very... Anyway. Oh, it's so sad. I know, it is sad. But, so as this boy grows up, he kind of has this second sense about him where he can kind of sense animals' emotions and minds and kind of put himself in their minds. Yeah. And communicate with them a little bit. And... When Burrich discovers this, he's like, shuts it down. Well, Burrich discovers yeah. it because um, Fitz, who at the beginning of the book, he doesn't have a name. No mm -hmm. one names him. Everyone mm -hmm. calls him Boy. Yeah. And he's called something. Boy for the majority of the, sh of the book. Like, a lot of the characters just call him Boy. Yeah. Which I actually liked. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. I really did. There was a moment when I was more than halfway into the book where I literally did not know his name. I know. Isn't that And great? I didn't know how I felt about it. Yeah. I like it now that I've finished the book and okay. see the overall picture of that happening. But yeah. when I was reading it, I was like, I don't even know the motherfucking name of the main character <laughs> here. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting yeah. decision. And I personally loved it. Yeah. Um, but back to his uh, magic, mm -hmm. because... Fitz, he has this ability to communicate with animals telepathically to a degree. Mm -hmm. He can sense their emotions. Um, and he, in his first night in the stable when he sleeps with the dogs, he bonds with one of the puppies there mm -hmm. named Nosy. Which is such a great it's name. It's so cute. It's so cute. It's so adorable and just breaks your heart. This poor little kid doesn't even know mm -mm. that he's being taken away from his family. And he's just... Living with the dogs, no one's really taking care mm -hmm. of him. He's just this wild child. Yeah. And he um, has this really special, close connection with one of those puppies, mm -hmm. Nosy. Yeah. And that's what Birch notices, is that, um, I don't remember specifically what happens, but like... He... Oh, gosh. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <clears throat> the point is, Birch notices that Fitz, boy, mm -hmm. has this... Uh, magic ability called the wit um and it's seen as this taboo thing in their world mm -hmm. and Burrich like, tries to stamp it out of yeah out of him it's like dirty to make a man yeah. communicate with a beast is kind of the yeah the basic taboo of it because you'll feel the emotions of the animal and they'll mm -hmm. influence you if you're like ravenously hungry because your bond animal is hungry and mm -hmm. you can only be bonded to one animal at a time by the way oh i didn't catch that Okay. I, I don't think they mention it specifically, but it's just it's kind just of a given rule of the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, then if you were like feeling ravenously hungry at the dinner table and you're supposed to have manners, but your yeah. bond animal is like in, influencing you mm -hmm. and then you like eat like an animal and it like yeah. ruins your... So that's just one example of how that Birch uses, not specifically that example, mm -hmm. of how the wit could... Uh, be a bad thing. Yeah, and he also gets upset because Fitz doesn't talk that much. He's a very yeah. low verbal individual at this point, and Birch is like, you, you're you an animal. You need to talk to me. You can't just pretend yeah. or be nonverbal with this, you know what I mean? Which was another point, like you were saying. Um, but yeah, the story follows Fitz as he grows up, and he goes on some Never mind. That doesn't make sense. He grows up, and as he becomes older, Birch is like, oh, someone needs to train you. Someone needs to raise you. Someone like needs to person. raise you. Here's <laughs> you this parents. guy named Chade. I don't know what he does, but he's going to do something with you, right? I don't know if it happens quite like that. It, it doesn't happen that soon either, but like I said... Well, well, we'll just say the main plot of this story, it's basically... I mean, it's in the title. Fitz is a bastard. He could technically have a claim to the throne because his father was the prince, Prince mm -hmm. Chivalry. Um, and people are telling him that 
you know, pe- someone might try to kill you because you're of noble blood mm-hmm. and they don't want to deal with you potentially one day having a claim to the throne. Mm-hmm. So he's being raised in the stables by Burridge and most people in royalty, like the king, who, King Shrewd, are like, well, that's one option. You could just be raised as a stable boy mm-hmm. or we could actually use you um give you housing inside the keep buck keep and train you to become an assassin yeah um so i think that's how he meets yes. shade <laughs> where king shrewd um basically makes uh this like six-year-old kid his next assassin in training yeah it, um, and i i really enjoyed that aspect um i really love a training montage and there was a long training montage in this book. And I liked, like, also, I have so many thoughts about this book. Yeah, no, it's okay. The whole book is written it's from first... the point of view of the adult version of Fitz recounting his past. Yes, you're right. Which is very unique and interesting. Yeah. I really, it just was, I've never seen that before. Maybe that yeah. happens more often in epic fantasies, but... Well, this book came out in 95, I believe, Uh which is the year that I was born. Um, And I wonder if she might have set a trend of like, you know, the story is told from the perspective of the character in the future. Yeah. So the whole book kind of reads like an epistolary. Yeah. It reads like a journal entry, Mm -hmm. which is neat. Um, And it also kind of gives you that reassurance of like, okay, in the end, Fitz, he's going to be all right. By yeah. the end of the story. Yeah, yeah. Because like, he talks about certain things from his perspective in the future mm-hmm. that are like, okay, maybe his life won't be that horrible <laughs> because it starts out so sad. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And he kind of finds some breaks and some normalcy of being a kid and growing up and finding friends. But as soon as he gets comfortable in that routine, it's taken away from him very quickly. Yes. And he starts training as an assassin at six years old. And it's a like a tough thing for him. Mm-hmm. He has to learn how to read, how to write, how to dress, mm-hmm. how to speak court, uh, like in in court, mm-hmm. right, with other noble people. So that does begin the a, a really interesting training montage, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I really liked it, and I think it's also interesting, being that it's kind of written as a journal entry, is that sometimes you'll get you'll be reading it, and you're like, okay. I'm in the head of a six-year-old boy. This makes sense. And then all of a sudden you'll get a... Mm -hmm. When I was young, I didn't realize this, but I now see this connection here as an adult, which was cool, too. Kind of contextualizes it, Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that happened, or when super traumatic stuff would happen, even the older version would be like, I don't remember what happened next, but I know it was not good, you know? Yeah. Which is an interesting light on how people react to traumatic situations and yeah. how in order to protect themselves, they might dial down what actually happened and stuff like that. Or misremember it. Yeah. Or forget it entirely. Uh-huh. Like even the first scene um, fits f- from his journal entry says something like, I don't remember anything that happened to me before I was six. Don't remember my mom. Don't remember my grandfather. Don't remember any of that. Mm-hmm. And he, He's basically saying that he blocked it all out because it was too painful for him. Yeah. Um, There's definitely heavy heavy themes of dealing with trauma in this book series, Mm -hmm. um, which I love personally. I found it relatable, and that's probably why I felt such a strong emotion to the character at first. Um, And maybe that strong emotional connection kind of like makes me look past some of the flaws and maybe the pace, which might Mm -hmm. have felt a little slow. Yeah. Or the length of the book. It's a long book. Mm-hmm. Um, I listened to the audio book. Yeah, it's a pretty long book. I don't book. know how many pages it is. Um, it's. I don't either because I read it on my Kindle. Yeah. Oh, it's literally behind us. We oh, can yeah. check. <laughs> um, it's quite a long book. I don't remember how long it was to listen to. Um, 453 pages. Yeah. So pretty long. Yeah. That's a good size. Yeah, that's a good size book. Um, but um, I loved... Um, I, I loved Fitz so much. I felt I felt such a strong emotional connection to him, and that's mm-hmm. why I could overlook some of the meandering plot points at the beginning. Yeah. Like you mentioned, before he became an assassin, he's 
kind of just being a wild child, hanging around uh-huh. with other poor orphan kids and like stealing from people and being a messenger yeah. boy. That sort of stuff, I feel like in a modern day book, you might cut out. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like a lot of the books I read start with a very clear direction yeah. and a very clear box to check. Yeah. This book did not have that the whole time. No, pretty it's a much. slow burn for sure. Yeah, which was different than what I usually read. I enjoyed yeah. it, but I there were some times <laughs> that I was like, "What is the point?" Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I totally know. Yeah, what you mean. and yeah. like part of that is the slow pace. Like we don't meet a very clear antagonist until mm-hmm. at least halfway through the book. Yeah. Not even mention him. Yeah. We don't. There's no like oh, this evil man will come later, it's, it's, there's no real antagonist to there. Like, yeah. there are people that frustrate the main character, and even Burrich has a lot of flaws. The man yeah, who raised does. him has a lot of flaws. So you do still get some antagonistic qualities from people around him, but it took for me until, it took me until I met Galen, is that? Uh-huh. Okay. Galen is... He's kind of like the Snape character. Yeah, yeah, that's a great example. To use a comparison. Example. Yeah. Um, and he, like, is the one who teaches Fitz how to use this type of magic that he has access to. Yeah. Because he's a prince's son, right? It's kind of... Yeah, so uh, just to give a little bit of context. Mm-hmm. So there's two magic systems in this world. The first one is the wit, which is your ability to communicate with animals. Mm-hmm. And the second one is the skill which is similar to the wit, but you communicate telepathically with other humans. Mm -hmm. And they both have their pros and cons, but they're both basically just telepathic communication. Mm -hmm. And some people are just born with the skill, but almost all royalty have the skill. Mm -hmm. So that's why Fitz, um, he got the skill from his father's side. And we don't know, but we assume that he got the wit from his mother's side. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, like, a position in this world called the skill master, which is the person who teaches all the young people how to skill. Yeah. And Galen is the skill master character, and he hasn't taught anyone in a long time. Yeah. Like, they've really limited who can use the skill to just royalty. Yeah. But in this book, there's some really interesting um, bad guys called the Red Ship Raiders, Mm -hmm. right? who are attacking their lands, and so the king is like, we need anybody who can skill right. to try and join our team and get better, so Galen is tasked to try to foster more skilled Because we need to defend ourselves. Yes. So just a bit of backstory with the world. Um, this kingdom has been in peace for a long period of time, mm-hmm. and they experience occasional raids from the Red Coast Raiders. Is that what they're called? Yes, yes. Okay. I think it's just Red Ship Raiders, actually. Red Ship Raiders. Yeah. Um, they, they play a, very, a pretty small role in the story. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like... Um, Pirates a yeah. little bit? Yeah, uh, or Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when they attack towns, they kidnap people and forge them, mm-hmm. right? That's in the first book. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, this is one of those things where it's like, I don't know if it's in the second <laughs> book or the first. Um, <clears throat> and forged people basically means that their, like, humanity is stripped away from them, and the only things that they think about are killing, stealing, and eating. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's one of the jobs of Fit throughout the book, is to take care of forced people by killing them. Assassinating them. Assassinating them, or poisoning them. Because Mm -hmm. they just cause chaos. Yeah, and and also at the beginning of each chapter, we get these, like... I don't even know what to call them, but at the beginning of each chapter, we get like some sort of excerpt or extra bonus information that pertains to the story. And in one of these, we see a backstory of Chade, the guy who teaches Fitz how to be an assassin. Mm -hmm. We see him try to cure someone who's forged or unforge them. And it's, it's just interesting to see all of the things that they have tried to cure these people. And there's just no answer. They yeah. can't figure it out in this first book. Not even someone with the skill can contact them. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason why they're training new skilled magicians isn't to unforge people or to mm-hmm. reforge people, I guess would be the term. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's to fight back against the Red Raiders mm-hmm. because this new forging ability is mysterious and powerful and it's tearing the kingdom apart. Yeah. 
Um, so they haven't had a need for new magicians in a long time um, until this, until the Raiders. And so King Shrewd is like, we need to train a new coterie. Mm -hmm. um, and Fitz, he's royalty and he has the skill. So he's selected as one of those people to be trained under Galen, mm -hmm. who does not like Fitz very much. No. <laughs> and even Chade is like, you're going to go do this, but... I can't he's, protect you. He, he can't. Yeah. Galen's like only order is that no one can contact or mess with the people he's training. It's his thing. Yeah. And he also isolates the people that he trains. He makes them eat whole foods is what he says, mm -hmm. right? And they can't, they don't talk. They like, it's very isolating. And the way that he trains him, trains all of these people in the potential coterie is very, very abusive and very, I'm the leader, I'm in charge, I'm the best, and it is a blessing for you to be within my presence. Yeah. Like, just a lot of manipulation. It, it was very interesting to read that, because I'm like, no, this is awful, how can you not see? But Yeah, it's, you're it's, being brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. So, he is, he does basically force his students to live, like, a monastic, ascetic lifestyle, mm -hmm. where it's like, you can only drink water and unsalted bread. Yeah. Right? Because the skill, um, the cost of using the skill is that you tap into this river of magic that's like mana. Mm -hmm. It's irresistible. And if you dive too deep in this, into the skill, then you can lose your mind. Um, so the reason why, from Galen's per point of view, you need to uh, abstain from all, like, earthly desires is so that you have the power to withstand the pull or mm -hmm. the drive of the skill. Yeah, which was really interesting. I really love when magic systems have a cost yeah. and it's like clear. I really enjoy that and yeah. I liked seeing that in this. Yeah, because um, the more you use the skill, the more you are, you're at risk of losing yourself, Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, and the more power you expend, the more chance you're going to get yourself stuck or yeah. go insane. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes. Galen is horrible. Yes, I hate him. <laughs> He's the worst. I really hated him. He does brainwash all these students into loving him, too. Mm -hmm. This training period lasts a long time, and Galen says, in order for you to train under me, you can't talk to your family, you can't talk to Birch, you can't talk to Jade, you can't go to King Shrew to protect you. You are under my control. Mm -hmm. And everyone agrees that that's what they have to do in order to learn it. Because yeah. he's the skill master, right? Mm -hmm. He has all this power over them. Yeah. And they need to find more magicians in order to protect their country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting because, like, the world very... Or the book really clearly sets up that this is the only option for yeah. him to learn the skill. It's the only way. And he really fits the main character, really has a lot of promise with the skill initially. There's this really great moment where... There's like a trial where Galen is skilling upon each student individually. Is this their final test? No, this is the first time okay. that they're really experiencing the skill. And, oh my gosh, we haven't even talked about my favorite character in the whole book. Patience? The Fool. Oh, the Fool is my favorite fool? character in the whole book. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Should we get sidetracked? No, I'm going to try to keep going on this okay. point. So, there's a lot of like physical and mental training that happens before the the children they're all children yeah um are shown the skill and when they're finally shown the skill galen and fitz kind of have a battle of yeah. wits or a battle of a kind of a mental battle yeah, a type mental thing. battle you know yeah. like picturing that in your mind you're like <laughs> <laughs> um and in this, Fitz kind of takes control and is more powerful than Galen. Yeah. And then in the end, Galen ends up winning and beats the shit out of Fitz. He loses his temper. He loses his temper. Because he's like, this kid mm -hmm. It actually has the talent that I'm envious of. Yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 And, well, especially that Fitz also is kind of... The whole time, Galen is super abusive, especially to Fitz specifically. Yeah. And Fitz takes it. Mm -hmm. Very neutral, very just takes it. And it's I think that stoic. also pisses him off a lot. Yeah. And then once he finally 
tries to get over him, Fitz is like, skidoo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does feel like that. Yeah. And because he's so much better at the skill, just yeah, naturally. Yeah. And then Fitz has a moment where everybody else leaves, everybody finishes their training training, and Galen has really, really hurt him physically. And then he tries to kill himself by jumping off of the tower that he's on. And there's one thing that saves him, and it's his connection to his dog. Mm -hmm. And that was so touching and sweet. I know, like, it doesn't make you cry. And this also is a different dog than we mentioned in the beginning. But read the book, you'll figure that out. Yeah. Well, Fit Fitz is just about to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Yes. So yeah. this is, to me... I thought it was obvious what happened. Mm -hmm. Galen has obviously skilled Fitz into doing this. Yeah. Like, he got so upset with this that he used his power over him to make him think that he was worthless and to make him figure out this, this alternative, this option, which is ending his life. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that that he does this. Because he also has the thought in his head of... I'm so bad at the skill. I couldn't have ever done this. I'm a bastard. I'm worthless. I'm nothing. Which has never been his internal monologue no. the whole time. No. Fitz is very humble but confident in his in himself, at least when yeah. it comes to his ability with the skill, until this moment with Galen. When Galen attacks him, nearly beats him to death, mm -hmm. and everyone else in the class is also brainwashed, and they all believe that, you know, this is just a part of his training. This mm -hmm. is what Fitz deserves. And everyone else in the coterie hates Fitz. Yep, and watches because this of happen. Galen. Yep, yeah, yep. Which is so oh, it's so interesting. Yeah. So earlier they do mention that the reason why um, Galen hates Fitz so much is because Galen and Chivalry, Fitz's father, used to know each other, and Chivalry, Chivalry was so much better than Galen at the skill, and they say that he impressed upon him which basically means that he left some kind of a mental imprint on Galen that made him completely subservient to chivalry mm -hmm. for the rest of his life. Yeah, and we don't learn that until the end, which was such a fun reveal to me. Oh, okay. I couldn't yeah. remember when that from, was brought up. From the beginning, they're just like, he loved chivalry. He kissed the ground he walked on. Yeah. But he hates you. We don't know why. Probably because you're a bastard. Okay. So that never gets answered until we meet Verity in the end. Not meet okay. him in the end, but see him again in the end of the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah. But that is kind of what Galen was doing to the Coterie mm -hmm. and to Fitz while they were being trained, is that he's using the skill to brainwash these people to follow him to the ends of the earth mm -hmm. and to make Fitz believe that he was worthless and should commit suicide. Yeah. Which was... I really enjoyed that. Sometimes... Yeah. This this Galen character is so complex. Yeah. But also you can understand and it's like a hum human problem in him. Yeah. Which was really intriguing. Sometimes I feel like bad guys are evil for the sake and of being evil it. so that they can have more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really liked how complex this was and how you could see the interpersonal relationships and how they were connected and yeah. I really enjoyed that. That's a great point. You mm -hmm. His motivation is really clear and understandable mm -hmm. throughout all of this. Yeah. So this whole training montage, is, uh, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you're following along mm -hmm. step by step. Yeah. Um, and this is definitely the low point of the book. Yeah. The only thing that saves... Um, Fitz. Fitz. I almost, <laughs> I almost called him chivalry. <laughs> um, is his bond with his dog. Mm -hmm. So... Throughout the book, Fitz cannot help but connect with animals, mm -hmm. and specifically dogs. He loved Nosy, his first bond animal, mm -hmm. and he bonded with it when he was only like six yes. years old. Mm -hmm. And Birch took it away. Took the dog away from him. And Fitz believes that Birch killed yeah. Nosy because the connection was gone just in a snap. So he's yeah. like, he, he thinks that Birch killed him. Yeah. Which is so unbelievably cruel. And at that point in the story, because there is a reveal at the end that he didn't actually kill Nosy. Mm -hmm. He just gave took him a him long, away. happy life. I oh, know. So good. And then at the end of the story, you're like, of course Birch wouldn't kill a puppy. Why would he do that? Well, even Birch has a moment of, 
You thought I killed him? Yeah. Which, of course he did. He was six years old when that happened. And Burrich is kind of cold. Yeah. Especially at the beginning. Mm -hmm. He's afraid to show his emotions. He's afraid to become a father figure for Fitz. Mm -hmm. um, it's not until after Chivalry dies that he really feels um, a stronger responsibility towards um, raising yeah. Fitz and taking care of him. He's like, his, this is all that I have of his father who I loved. Mm -hmm. And he and Fitz has no one else in the world. Yeah. Um, so that... That relationship is also complex and changes over time. Mm -hmm. um, and any time that uh, Burrich catches Fitz using the wit around him, he always checks him and says, mm -hmm. do not do that. Mm -hmm. Do not bond with another animal or mm -hmm. else I'm going to have to do with that animal that I did with Nosy. Yeah. Which in Fitz's mind is like, okay, if I bond with another animal, Burrich is going to kill it. Yeah. It's a great relationship because it always hangs in the balance. Mm-hmm. The only close emotional connection to another living thing that Fitz feels at this point in the book is to a dog. Mm -hmm. Nosy was his closest companion. Yeah. And he, when he finds another dog that he loves, he can't help but connect with it. Yeah, and I think part of why that works so well is because he, he's living in this place called Buckkeep, which is filled with all of these people who have opinions on him that are very loud and very negative. Yeah. So a lot of the personal relationships that he does have are from people who are spitting on him or yeah. saying you're a shame to the name, you know? Yeah. So how could you not find something that loves you with no questions asked? No judgment, not, unconditionally. Not crave that, you yeah. know? Of course, it makes sense. Because even his relationship with Burrich, which is his most positive relationship with anybody in the keep... Um, Maybe. Him and Chade, yeah, yeah are kind yeah. of on the same level, but they're still like mentors. Yeah, exactly. And not really fathers. And even him. those relationships are still somewhat cold. Yeah. So. Well, Chade is training him to become an assassin, right? Uh -huh. That's their relationship. Yeah. It's like you need to perform these tasks and you need to mm -hmm. be amazing. He still cares about him, he's kind to him, mm -hmm. and they do grow, uh, grow closer. Yeah, together. they have a good relationship too. But. The point is that there's no comparison between those human relationships mm -hmm. and Fitz's relationships with a dog. Yeah. Or his horse, Sooty. That's also oh, a good Sooty. relationship. Which yes. is also a great name. All of the names in this book were so fun. Oh, good. I'm glad so you So great. Yeah. I mean, we have royal figures named King Shrew, Patience. Shrewd. Lady Time. Shrewd. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's not an shrewd. animal. <laughs> I'm thinking of Shakespeare over here. Yeah. But we get a lot of really fun names, which really inflect the character, and it's and fun. It's good world building, too. Yeah, it is. It is really fun. I love that the nobility are named after virtues. Mm -hmm. Verity, chivalry, patience. Mm -hmm. It's great. Also, Regal is a great was... name. It tells oh, yes. you so much about her mom. Yes. Or uh, his mom, too. Yeah. Oh, gosh. What a great character. Yeah. Um. So... To wrap up the book quickly, I guess we don't have to. Well, the the point with the with the dogs, sorry. No, you're fine. Is that Nosy is taken away very early, and then when uh, Fitz meets Patience, Patience, who was his father's wife, mm -hmm. she gives him a puppy as a gift, and he doesn't say no. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, oh, thank you. I'm not telling Bert about this. Nope. <laughs> he's like, Shh. yeah. I love this dog so know, much. Well, plus, and it's like a little wiry Jack Russell Terrier, yeah. essentially, which is, his other dog was a hound dog. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I thought that was funny. Patience is known for having really annoying rat dogs, and she's like... Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. She's really eclectic and neurotic. Uh-huh. I was hoping you would like her character. I loved her character. And I... I thought it was very fun. I also enjoyed that the first time he meets... His dad's wife, who is uh -huh. not his mother, is that he's drunk. Yes. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to have He's like 14 years old, yeah. alone in just some random place in the keep. And she's like, um, you need to be a little bit more like the person you are. And he's like, who are you? <laughs> doesn't even He doesn't even ask her who he is. Okay. Who she is. Okay. He just is like, oh, this nice pretty old lady not really that old but you know mm -hmm. is in the gardens with me i don't know this i really enjoyed that and then the next day he's hung over and chade is like you made is it birch or chade 
I can't remember which one of them it is, but someone's like, you made quite the impression on patients. Mm -hmm. You are now going to be trained to be a prince. I think it was Burrich. Burrich? Okay. I think I so. I think so, too. Yeah. Sometimes I've got them mixed up. Yeah. In my recollection. Um, yeah. Anyway, he gets a second dog from Lady Patience. Mm -hmm. We just went on a tangent about her because she's a great secondary character. Yeah, so I loved fun. her. She's one of my favorites mm -hmm. in the book. She's just a little bit unstable, but and in the best way. A little bit in the, on the spectrum. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for like, sure. She has all these special interests. Well, plus, yeah, he's like... He's in her towers training with her, and he's like, there's so many plant propagations all over. There's yeah. forgotten embroidery. There's three puppies on the floor that she's stepped on. Yeah. Like, all these things that interest her, but She only... hates socializing with people. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. And, and I also, love that. I really, I really enjoyed getting a little bit of light on Chivalry's character as yeah. well, because they're kind of like, Chivalry could have married anybody and made them the queen, and he chose this weird lady who gave him no attention she was noble but not that yeah yeah high up yeah in the social hierarchy yeah it just was nice that it just i really liked that sweet thing yeah <laughs> i did too but this second dog that he gets um he doesn't know what to name it mm -hmm. and then the fool who's another character we could talk about yes. briefly tells him that he should name it smithy mm -hmm. or something he gives yeah. a couple of recommendations he said, right he was saying that this dog and him will be like the anvil and the hammer that will strengthen yeah. and forge him. Yeah. And so the fool's like, you should name him Smithy. And a couple others, but I can't remember them. Yeah. So he names the dog Smithy. And the fool speaks in a lot of riddles mm -hmm. in a lot of mysterious ways. And, like, I really enjoyed Fitz's relationships with the fool because I think they saw a lot of similarities in one another that the fool is the king's hired entertainment. Yeah. And he's not allowed to talk to anyone, but he talks to Fitz a lot when mm -hmm. no one is around. And he always says weird stuff that Fitz has to puzzle out. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some really nice kindred spirit there. And but they're both kind of orphans. Mm -hmm. They have this great responsibility yeah. over their heads to be something to other people. Yeah. They're also mistreated or people underestimate them. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I loved their connection too. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, getting back to the training arc with Galen, mm -hmm. um, it's Fitz's connection with Smithy that saves him. Mm -hmm. That it's that one relationship that you know he decides that's something worth living for. Yeah, um, and I loved that because throughout this entire book, there's this sense of tension of like. If Fitz bonds with another animal, then Burrich is going to be angry and try to kill it. Mm -hmm. Or he's going to, like, disown him, disown yeah. Fitz. Um, but I love that Fitz didn't listen to that anyway. Like, mm -hmm. he could have just as easily been like, I can't, I can't take, take this, this dog. dog. But he can't help but follow his emotions. Mm -hmm. And then that's the thing that saves his life when he yeah. needs it the most. Yeah, and, and the impis... The impissment? <laughs> yes. The impulsivity of him. Yeah accepting that and not immediately going, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. But him just going. Yeah, I'll take it. I have yeah. to. He wants it, yeah. so he takes it. I, and he, I love that. And he keeps it in secret for a while. Yeah. And there's this great moment where the fool is like, it smells like piss in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's that's just, I enjoyed that moment as yeah. well. <laughs> His room is a mess because yeah. he's keeping this dog not cleaning Secretly. up after it. <laughs> The pace was slow. Yeah, the pace is very slow. The pace slow. was very slow. Yeah. That's kind of all I have to say about that. Overall, I did enjoy it. It was just, it was just not what I'm used to. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about the clip side moment. I mean, no, when no. he's trying to commit suicide. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are we done talking about that? I think so. Okay. Okay. I I felt like that was the lowest point of the book, mm -hmm. and I was so enraptured at this point because him trying to learn the skill with Galen and Galen trying to keep him from that goal, and it ending with um, Galen trying to kill, mm -hmm. murder, fit. And he would have done it if not yeah, for the dog. He would have. Yeah. I thought that was such a great conclusion, the way to tie all those elements together mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It's like Rich is 
fits his relationship with bonding with animals yeah. and with Burrich. Um, we should probably <laughs> mention briefly, I absolutely love, Fitz is obviously a mess. Yeah. Like, Galen almost beat him to death with his bare hands. Mm -hmm. And so he's just lying in bed, trying to recover physically from this thing. And Burrich is like, tell me what happened, what happened, what happened? And Fitz is like, trying to protect Galen, because Galen's got this kid brainwashed. Yeah. You'll have to correct me. No, I think that's right. Okay. He, he also, he also is like... He, I think part of him doesn't want to involve Burridge. Like, he's maybe... Uh, I don't know. You keep going. Okay. But the the point is, um, Fitz is reluctant to um, to say that Tattle, Galen almost? tried to kill him. Because he's like, no, I failed. That's what I deserve. Mm -hmm. Galen did the right thing by trying to kill me. I, I don't think he knows that Galen skilled him in that moment. No. I don't think so either. Okay. Um, anyway, but he but he knows that he, Galen beat the shit out of him. Yes. But he just thinks that's the punishment he deserves mm -hmm. for, for not being to able to do it, mm -hmm. for not passing the test. Yeah. But Galen used cheap tricks. Yeah. Obviously, and what I loved is Burrich leaves Fitz to rest. He's like, he here's some here's some her. herbal tea to help you sleep. Yeah. And then meanwhile, he rolls up his sleeve, <laughs> drags Galen out of his room, uh -huh. takes him to the witness stone. Yes, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, it's a place, who knows what happens there, they only bring it up one time. Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> Burrich just beats Galen within an inch of his life for what he did to Fitz. Yep. Which is like, oh, I know. that's it's, how Burrich shows his it's love. It's so great, Burrich is like, there, there, I'm gonna go beat up this asshole. <laughs> yeah, I just love Burrich so much. Yeah, and I think, I think that also, I don't think Fitz was willing, I mean, Fitz didn't know Burrich was willing to do that or cared that much about him yeah like that was definitely a big revelation of he's had my back the whole time okay yeah you know what i mean yeah i don't I, think he could see that right I'm, I'm i couldn't remember exactly how fitz felt in the moment towards burrich yeah i'm at the point in the story where it's like i know that burrich loves yeah he doesn't for a long time okay not, 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 not until, until here. the end end yeah mm -hmm. um but that was really interesting, and that also you get a moment of Burrich finds... Smithy comes and gets Burrich, basically, to go get Fitz, yeah. right? So Burrich is like, well, you did it again, too. So I think Fitz is also in like this, like, I can't move because I'm either going to betray my best friend, which is my dog, or the man who's brainwashed me. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And then he's like... That tension is great. And then he's like, oh... The one I was worried about, which is Burrich, has my back. Yeah. Like, that's a very, very nice moment, especially after the darkest, darkest part of the show. I mean, book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I I think Burrich, seeing that his dog saved his life, makes him feel like, okay, I'm upset that you bonded with another animal. You can't do it again. But I understand why you need it, mm -hmm. and this is a very good boy. Yeah. This is well, a good plus, doggy. I mean... He is like climbing to the edge of the yeah. thing. Like he can tell this when Burge comes to save Fitz, I think he can tell where that was going to. Like, yeah, he can. He definitely sees he's the severity of this is not lost on Burge at all. No, no. Um anyway, that's I think that kind of concludes that yeah. scene. Yeah. Um it is eventually uh Fitz he does overcome his brainwashing after a lot of convincing from, from Burrich and Patience, right? I don't remember how he breaks out of that. It's actually Verity who does. We get this time after he's been brainwashed into thinking he sucks where he mopes around. He goes into emo boy for yeah. a long time. Maybe not a long time, but a while. And it takes him a month to find Chade again. Chade is like, hey, I have a task for you. And there's like this He's kind of like this moody, like, mm, mm -hmm. I know I failed. Don't don't be nice to me. I failed. And Shade is like... Get over yourself, he, buddy. Yeah. He's you're like, still an and, assassin. And, like, you're still fully capable of doing what we trained you to do in the first place. Yeah. So, and he, Patience tries to talk to him a couple times, and he's just puts no effort in. He's kind of mean to her. He offends her because he puts no effort in. Like, he's right. not like, mm, or anything. Maybe I shouldn't flip off because this is on YouTube. I'm so sorry. No, they don't care. Okay. Um, 
but he offends patients, so patients stops sending for him. And then Chade is like, King Shrewd has given you a task to take care of Verity. Shrewd, Chade is like, you need to figure yourself out. You're going to walk up and down the stairs every single day and take care of Verity while he's up in his tower until you get your body back. Because during the training with Galen, there's a lot of starvation. standing and starvation. So yeah. he's not as physically fit as he was to be an assassin. So he gets introduced to Verity again. We see Verity in the beginning of the book, and he's a nice, intricate character who is kind of... He kind of oh, felt out, yeah. of, like, out of my reach a little bit as a reader. Yeah. he's He doesn't have ambitions for the throne. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And that responsibility is thrust upon him once his older brother, Chivalry, dies. Uh-huh. So he has to change a yeah. little bit. And he could have been a kindly uncle to mm-hmm. Fitz. He's literally his uncle. And I think he was in the beginning. Like, yeah. we get to see Verity and he's, I don't know, nice. He's nice. But he could have been more like, oh my god, this is my brother's bastard. Yeah. Um, I should raise him. Mm-hmm. But I think he might be younger than I actually pictured in the story. Oh, yeah, that's possible. He could have been, like, 17 or something. Who? Wait, Verity? Verity? No, Verity's, like... In his 30s or 40s. Okay, so it's a little weird that he's just kind of like, eh, I don't really think about my brother's son. Yeah. But I I see what you're saying. It does feel a bit distant. Yeah, and so we meet Verity again at the end of this book. Not the end, it's like the last quarter, maybe third. Mm -hmm. And Verity has been using his skill to protect the kingdom from these red ship raiders. Mm-hmm. And it is taking a toll on him. He can't. He can barely eat. He just sits in the window of his tower and skills. Yeah. Which takes all of it out of him. Yeah. So Fitz takes care of him, and throughout this, they get a nice bond where Fitz is just tasked to make sure he eats. But Fitz is a nice person, and he sweeps and fluffs his pillows like he. Oh no, the. Go on. Go on. Good boy. We have like maybe five minutes. Okay. Okay, so we get to see Verity, and Verity skills to Fitz in this moment on accident. He's just so tired and doesn't think and has been skilling for so long. Mm-hmm. And Fitz is like, whoa. I'm blown away by it. What was that? And Verity's like, you're messed up. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of walls up. You can use the skill. Yeah, you have a lot of promise. But you're scared. You're just... Galen has it. caused a lot of trauma. Like, he even says that. He's like, yeah. you're too traumatized to learn this. And so Fitz is like, oh, there's a window of hope. It's not my fault that I failed. Yeah, and that's when he realizes. Right. So he goes for a long time thinking it was just him. And then he's like, oh my gosh, I could have been mad at him the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So Verity's like, I could teach you, but I don't have the time. So Fitz is like, <gasps> mm-hmm. again. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I really liked the relationship with Verity. It's sad. He is in a sad position of giving him his whole self away to take care of the kingdom and protect it. Yeah. While their younger, his younger brother Regal is off gallivanting and courting women and creating a lot of messes. Yeah. Um. But this is this is one other thing that did bother me about the book is every time I would get close to a second secondary character, it would be swapped out for another one. Mm. Like I felt like as soon as I got close to Burrich, it was Chade. And mm. then I was like, okay, I'm really liking this Chade character. And then it's like, oh, actually, it's Galen now. Mm. And then it was like, oh, no, it was Patience before it was Galen. And then once I liked Patience, it was like, oh, here's Galen. And then once Galen was done, it was like, oh, here's Verity. And I was like, right. it was... A little bit of whiplash. It was a lot of whiplash, and I really enjoy character relationships in books, especially between two or three tight-knit yeah. people who are together a lot. And I think Robin Hobb does a fantastic job of establishing these relationships and making them deep and complex and interesting and make sense mm-hmm. in a short period of time. But I, I don't know. Maybe not spending enough time developing those relationships throughout the story. Yeah, it just it just felt so clipped onto the next one as ah, soon as I would get okay. like comfortable in the relationship maybe. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. 
Huh. Yeah, I didn't have that problem. For me, I love a cast of a lot of characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like what you're describing, which is like a very close relationship to, between two characters. It's the most important relationship in the book. They uh-huh. come back to it time and time again, and it develops over time. Mm-hmm. Um, that really isn't there in this story. It mm-hmm. does kind of feel like um, Fitz is on his own, yeah. kind of exploring this world, and these characters kind of flit in and out of his life. Yeah. Personally, that good. wasn't a problem for me, uh-huh. um, but I can see how it would um, feel abrupt yeah. once you switch from one point of view, or not one point of view, from one scene to another, one character to another. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, Galen is done, now let's move on to this part. Yeah. It doesn't feel like these uh, roles are integrated into the same narrative. Yeah, a little bit. Like, okay. it's kind of like father mentor mode. Assassin, Assassin mentor, mode. mentor mode. Magic mentor mode. Mom mentor Princely mode. Princely mentor mode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah. And then I can also see how the narrative might not feel like it has a good flow to it, where mm-hmm. it's like the first act, training montage. Second act, um, assassin he's an assassin. Montage. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Third act is like, okay, now let's go to the mountains. Where it's like, where did that come from? Yeah, I okay. did kind of feel that way. And I also was like, oh, we finally have a plot in yeah. chapter 20 of 24. Yes. A little bit. Which, exactly. Overall, I loved the book. And taking a step back, I didn't mind the journey. Yeah. But while I was going through the journey, it just felt a little bit. Directionless, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can totally see that. For whatever reason, um, I was just enraptured by the story from beginning uh-huh. to end, it, and I didn't think deeply about why I liked it so much. I yeah. was just along for the ride, and I would like to read it again, because I didn't think about those things. Mm-hmm. But now that you point them out, I can see and understand yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Um, that being said, each of the acts on their own, maybe in a vacuum, are great. Yes, yeah. Like the Galen training arc, I love. We obviously mm-hmm. talked about that the most. Mm-hmm. Even the assassin training art. Very interesting. Like, really fun. Like I was like, how do you, how do you write how to become an assassin? But yeah. it's like he had small tasks to do as a six-year-old. Go find yeah. the red thimble in someone's drawer, take it for a week, and then give it, put it back without anyone noticing. Yeah. That's so genius and interesting. And it's so light. Yeah. And it's described in just a few paragraphs, mm-hmm. and it just makes this. Adventure feel so much more fun. Yeah, you feel like he's actually learning how to become an assassin. Uh huh. I love that stuff too. I do too. And like something else that the narrative, the way that it's written, a positive of this is that there's a lot of there's some travel across a lot of distance, but because yeah. it's written as a journal entry, it reads quickly, makes sense. Yeah. Like you don't feel like it's rushed, but it is. Yeah. But it's like it's nice. Yeah, it could be like one chapter he's in Buckkeep, and then the next he's in a totally different mm-hmm. town from miles away. Yeah. And that doesn't feel abrupt. No, yeah. It's very interesting, very unique. Yeah. I guess just briefly to talk about the third act, mm-hmm. I love the ending of this book so much. I did too. Okay. I read that last chunk so quickly. Okay, mm-hmm. I thought you would. Mm-hmm. Um, that is when the story's at its best. Yeah. Fitz is doing his final task to, as an, or I guess this is really his first task. First big assignment. As an assassin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is to kill a prince. Yeah. And Regal, who we mentioned briefly, has been lying to a lot of the people around him, so when Fitz gets to this area, he realizes that he's actually been misinformed mm-hmm. pretty severely, and then he has to figure out how he would do it, because he's far away from Che, far away from the king. He has no way to contact them, because they're months of travel away, weeks, and can't skill. maybe, and he can't skill. And, like, we see him process the information that he's given, and then he thinks he figures it out, and he still had it wrong. Yeah. And people get hurt, and... It's a very dramatic ending. It's so good. It's so... Revealed perfectly. Yeah. It's revealed perfectly. It is. It's it's great. It's almost like the Fitz is thrown into a situation that he's unprepared to deal with. Mm-hmm. And this is what makes plot so good. Mm-hmm. Is when the main character has a plan, an objective, I'm going to go kill this prince. And then as soon as they're faced with the challenge of a- accomplishing that objective, they're thrown 
uh, a wrench is thrown into the works and they have to improvise. Yeah. Um, and that's what makes that final scene so interesting is that we learn about how Regal and Galen have been working together this whole time to kill Verity and to kill Fitz and to take control of the throne. Yeah. Um, it's all revealed at this last moment and Fitz has to figure out what that plan is and try to know what to do about it. Like, should I assassinate Regal? Mm-hmm. Or should I stop Regal's attempted assassination on this prince because he's not a bad person and he shouldn't die? Mm-hmm. It's just a great ending act. Yeah, I really loved it. And yeah. all of the pieces fit together great, except for the ones that you need for book two. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it's great. And we also get to see Nosy again in this third act. Yeah, which is so Burridge, heartwarming. It is. And Burrich traveled with chivalry mm-hmm. to the mountains yeah. at the end. Which, at this point, Burrich and Fitz are not talking. Burrich says, stay the hell away from me. We're better off apart. Because I can't you keep look at you. bonding to animals. <laughs> yeah. And it disgusts me. Yeah. It's a perversion. And then we get a piece of information, which is um, Fitz finally figures out that Burrich can do the wit, wit too. Yeah. That's, why he, that's part of why he hates it so much. Yeah. And... Which is interesting. It took him a long time to piece that together, but that's okay. It's a good reveal. Yeah, yeah. And and also, sometimes I... For a guy who's trained as an apprentice, he sure is a little bit thick. <laughs> yeah, he can be kind of dim. You know? But that's okay. Um, They're trying to give you a slow reveal yep. of these things, make it satisfying, uh-huh. but kind of sometimes can come at the cost of making the character feel a little less competent. Yes, which is the issue with having Annabeth as a character in Percy Jackson. Because she's supposed to be a genius, mm. and there's stuff that Annabeth would figure out quicker. I don't know, but they're fixing that in the TV series. Oh, so. good. Anyway. So let's hope for that. It's just interesting when you have a character who's supposed to be super, super observant, and then yeah. they just miss some stuff. But, I mean, that happens in regular people, too, so... Yeah, but it can feel unsatisfying. Yeah. Um, or inconsistent, I guess. There is this great moment, which is... I don't even know how to say this quickly. But in the end, Nosy saves Fitz's life when mm-hmm. he is dying, and then Nosy dies. Oh, and it's so touching and so sure. sweet. Yeah. It's so, spoiler alert, both of the dogs die in this book. All the dogs die. They're, I did look it up on DoesTheDogDie.com. The <laughs> yes, they do die. They both die. It's so sad. There's two old yellers in this book. <laughs> yes. And one of them isn't even old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of them's a puppy, so you uh, think it's killing me a puppy. It's so sad. I love this book. To me, it was heartbreakingly good. Mm-hmm. It actually affected my mood in a negative way when I was binging it. <laughs> Those three days, I uh-huh. was just heartbroken. I was like, please, can something good happen to Fitz? Yeah. I want something, like, happy mm-hmm. for him. Please. Oh, plus the girl he likes ends up dating another guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's great. It's one of my all-time favorites, mm-hmm. really. Um, it's got flaws, and I can see how it would be your type of book, which I'm glad you read it, mm-hmm. because you'll, you pointed out things that I didn't notice. Yeah. Um, and that has changed my perspective on the book. Right. But this is, was right up my alley, and it's a book that I'll come back to again and again, yeah. for sure. I really enjoyed it. Like you said, it's not what I usually read, yeah. but I'm really glad I did. Um, it's super different than anything else I've read before. Yeah. I really liked the point of view of it all. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the magic system. It was, like you said, magical, but not out of this world, almost. Yeah. Like, which was not fun. not as crazy as... Um, Shadow powers. Yeah, exactly. Ice. It's not super creative, but it's satisfying yeah. and well done. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed it. And, yeah, overall, I super enjoyed the book. Overall, I super enjoyed the book. <laughs> <laughs> it, the pace was slow. I will still say that. It was mm-hmm. a slow book. Yeah. But it was a satisfying ending. Looking back on it, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Even if there were times that I was like, what page am I on? I still have to keep you know reading. I mean? Yeah. Yep. yep. I did not okay. have that problem with Bonesmith. Bonesmith was a page turner. That's good. That's good. Um, But it just had other things that pointed out. And that stuck out to me. Yeah, exactly. Me. It's so, interesting to see what we take away from the same books. I know. Yeah. And even though you and I can both point out like pretty much objective flaws or shortcomings with the book, mm-hmm. we still say, well, I like yeah, it. I still liked it. Yeah, I, I enjoy that. I don't like when people are like, um, 
No, this there was one an is issue, good. and because of that, it's the worst book I've ever been. Yeah. I've ever read. Or the latter, where people are like, um, best book I've ever read. It has no flaws. There's no flaws. I can't even tell you why I liked it. It's yeah. like, well, that's that's an issue. Yeah. That's I don't know. why I don't really like rating systems for things like art, mm -hmm. <laughs> like movies, manga, whatever. It's hard. Because everyone's point of view is so different mm -hmm. coming into the book. Yeah. Like for me, reading Assassin's Apprentice, what I when I did, it was at the exact right time. I was ready for it mm -hmm. to destroy me. <laughs> yep. And it did in all the right ways. Uh -huh. Um and to me, in my point of view, it was like a five out of five book. Yeah. But someone else might I read gave it. it a four and a half. That's a really high score. Which was really high for me. We to shouldn't be fair, give it a score yeah, because I just said that scores. I hate giving scores. I take that back. This has no rating. <laughs> the point is that um, one person can love a book, another person can hate a book. I mean, it mm -hmm. sounds so obvious and stupid, no, but, but I'm I mean, trying to make it sound much smarter than it actually is. I think that's the whole point of taking in media and discussing it with other people. Yeah. Because it's interesting to see their perspectives and why they liked it and why they didn't. Yeah, I agree. And maybe we should say that we either recommend a book or don't recommend a book. Yeah, I recommend this book. Maybe that's a better book. system. Yeah. I recommend it too. And I also recommend Bonesmith, even though mm -hmm. it wasn't one of my favorites. Yeah, I do too. But yeah. that's because it was my favorite book of the year. Yes. Um, Next week is the episode that the internet will lose their crap on, I think. Yeah. Can we say what next week is? Sure. Next week is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah I J. can't Mass. wait. I've already been reading it. Yes, I made him read Avatar. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear what he says. And it is exactly my type of book. Um, like and subscribe if you want to watch my brother read Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we done? Okay, I think that's it.